Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. It is another preview prediction video for Yannick Sinner versus Daniel Medvedev this time for the semi finals of the ATP Tour Finals of 2023. This is such an intriguing matchup. We've actually had this match already four times this year and already twice on indoor hardcore. It's one on the indoor hardcore uh, matches and two all in terms of head to head for the year. Overall, head to head is actually 6 2 to Medvedev. So Coming into the year, uh, Sinner had never beaten Medvedev. Uh, he was six love down the head to head. And the last two matches have been won by Sinner. One on indoor hard, the Vienna final in Austria, and then one in Beijing when he won in two tiebreakers, which was outdoor hard as well. So this is a really, really, I would say, intriguing matchup just because Sinner's playing incredible tennis. Medvedev, of course, is... The stronger of the two when it comes to the head to head, but in terms of recent matches in the head to head, Sinners actually have the upper hand. So, will Medvedev be able to make adjustments like he did, for example, against Alcaraz at the US Open last year, uh, or this year, sorry, even uh, when he lost him at Wimbledon and then made adjustments at the US Open? We'll have to wait and see. We're going to get straight into it, though. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and do leave a rating or review if you're listening in a podcast platform. Okay, this is how we're going to break it down. First of all, we are going to go into uh, the matches they played so far, so their matches from the round robin, and then we're going to. Uh, and actually, when I go into their match from the round robin, I'm going to very briefly touch upon how they played, how they've looked. the The courts are indoors, indoor hard courts, sorry, even, and they're playing extremely quickly. So, you know, it, there's going to be an element of also talking about how their style has suited the surface or not suited the surface. Then we'll talk about the head to head briefly. And then in more detail, we'll go over how I think the match is going to potentially play out, what's going to be important, what to look out for. And I will then give you guys my prediction on who I think is going to win. Okay, so let's first of all talk about their route to the stage, their round robin matches, how they looked, who they played, and what have been the results. So for Yannick Sinner, he's looked very good. He hasn't lost a single match. He's the only player in the semi finals who has not lost a match. So unbeaten so far uh, he's been incredibly impressive beating six pass in straight sets in his first match then Djokovic in I would say the match of the tournament so far an incredible three setter a final set tiebreaker as well to boot and then also beating Holger Rune yesterday in really really impressive fashion I have to say he looked really good against uh, the the Dane and look I mean I am a big fan of how mentally strong and tough Holger Rune is really fought out there but Sinner again overcoming Rune and what's been really interesting is is that in the last few months he's beaten players that he'd never beaten before in his career so far so for example Djokovic he had a losing head-to-head to never beaten him before then beat him at the ATP Tour Finals uh, a few days ago Holger Rune he had a two love head-to-head losing record against beat him again for the first time yesterday and then against Medvedev, he beat him. Yes, the last two times he's beaten him. And one of the ATP finals that, uh, you know, within the last couple of months. But again, he had a six love head to head losing record against him and has won the last two matches. So the last, whatever, three months maybe have been incredibly, I would say, productive for Yannick Sinner. And it's shown the, the gains he's made in his game have been substantial and it's well he's reaping the rewards of it at the moment because his form and the way that he's playing has definitely i think for a, a neutral and for tennis analysts out there and also for fans of his it would definitely give them confidence in his ability to win against almost anyone on tour at the moment that's the type of level that he's playing right now is Look, I mean, to beat Djokovic is no mean feat. He's only been beaten once on hard court this year. Uh, that was by Daniel Medvedev. Uh, he went into the ATP Tour Finals, I think, with a record of 33-1 and one on hard court. So that's an incredible win, to say the least. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he's clearly physically and mentally made some impressive improvements. And one of those biggest things has been his serving. He served extremely well. Uh, throughout this tournament and it's a, a big big improvement and he's actually changed his technique uh halfway through the season almost uh he actually used to serve the platform stance as a pinpoint stance there's been some small adjustments with his uh with like the mecha- the mechanics or the moving parts anyway of his serve as well 
uh, which have been really interesting, and it's definitely paid off. Uh, so kudos to him. That's one of the one of the big improvements that he's made and adjustments that have paid dividends. But his ball striking has always been very clean. On these indoor hard courts with the home crowd behind him, uh, he's been playing really well. And I think his shot tolerance has improved. Uh, his shot selection has improved. And those are two things really that if he's able to effectively construct his points um, to the best of his ability, it's very difficult to beat him because he's an extremely natural, clean ball hitter. Uh, in all honesty, and one of the best out there, and not just on the forehand but backhand side as well. And uh, so that's, uh, and he's incredibly athletic. Again, defensively as well, shot tolerance is definitely there. He is already very elastic in terms of his movement and ability to be around the court. But uh, I think the the level of the level of consistency and ball striking. And defensive capabilities from Yannick Sinner has definitely improved and gone up a, not, a notch or two even. Uh, and that's why he finds himself in these ATP Tour finals are one of the favourites now. Uh, because his level is just extremely good at the moment. For Daniel Medvedev, it's been a pretty good tournament so far. Uh, I mean, he just lost to Alcaraz today. So uh, but he'd already qualified for the semi-finals. So I wonder whether he had... Maybe in the back of his mind, subconsciously, a little bit of thought about, look, okay, this is an important match, but it's all the be all and end all. And actually, by losing to Alcaraz, it means that he'll avoid Djokovic. And I think even though he's lost to Sinan the last two times, he probably would have preferred to play Sinan than Djokovic, potentially. And I actually think Djokovic would prefer to play Alcaraz than Medvedev. So there's some interesting preferences, I think, among the players. Uh, that's my thoughts anyway on it. But either way, he... No, he definitely gave it his all. 6 4 6 4. So it was a pretty tight match. We lost to him in straight sets. Uh, but he started off against Rublev in really good fashion, winning in straight sets, played incredibly well. Hit something like 24 winners to six unforced errors in that match. Uh, then played Zverev very clinical in that match. It was a tight one. Uh, just managed to take his chances better than Zverev. And yeah, the Alcaraz match, as I said, you know, didn't come out on top. But look, he is looking pretty good, to be honest. And I think on an indoor hard court, you would have backed him against Alcaraz, but I will take that loss with a pinch of salt and more focus on the Zverev and Rublev victories. He's serving well. He loves playing indoors. We know that he's got incredible ability to absorb pace and also, also redirect, or even pace as well. Uh, his defensive capability is incredible. Uh, we know he's going to stand very far back behind the baseline uh, on return, but his pinpoint returning has definitely been... I think it's been a pretty regular part of his matches uh, in this tournament. And that's been incredibly impressive to see because he knows that people are going to come forward. They're going to serve and volley. So he needs to be very accurate with his returns. If he's going to want to give himself enough time to take big swings, then you know, it's got to be a very high quality return. And I think he's done that in a lot of the cases against Alcaraz today. He did struggle in some instances with the serve volley, but you know, it wasn't as prominent as, say, the issues he had against, say, Kyrgios or Alcaraz in the past. In matches, I think he started to cotton on to and anticipate, I think, when the serve volley is going to come more than he did in the past. He's also, uh, you know, moving earlier on the return and almost, not necessarily guessing, but maybe, let's say, taking a calculated estimate as to where he thinks it's going to go, depending on the ball toss and, and a service shape. But I think he's become a lot better in that aspect as well. And he's already a very good returner as it is, but he's maybe added a, a layer to it, uh, which is interesting to see. On top of that, the backhand we know is always very reliable. Defensively, he's very good at being able to defend on the run, on the stretch, and still generate really good depth, uh, normally cross-court to get him back to neutral. Uh, but the forehand's been quite good, actually, from what I've seen. Uh, which is a real positive because it was very good at the start of the year for the first few months, uh, you know, maybe with the exception of the Australian Open. And he won a lot of tournaments uh, in that period because the forehand looked very good. On these fast indoor hard courts, I've seen him go for it more, and I think he should go for it more. It is still the shot that isn't quite as reliable, but he needs to continue to try and utilize as a weapon when he can. And 
it's a balancing act because he doesn't want to be over aggressive and then make a lot of mistakes and that then becomes an issue because at the end of the day his game his the foundations of his game are built upon the foundations of Danny Medvedev's game are built upon shot tolerance defensive capabilities making your opponent miss and if he's not doing that then the whole identity of his game is in trouble so especially if he's not doing it at a very high level anyway of course he can't make zero out of four errors that, that's very very difficult to do in a match but almost impossible but you know he's the type of player that is going to try and limit his errors as much as possible and he wants to induce errors out of the opponent and frustrate them make them play that extra ball so yeah the forehand though has been good and i think he's he's chose well he's he's chosen the right moments to be aggressive on that forehand and it's been calculated decisions and he's clearly playing into the percentages when it comes to being aggressive and i think he's been quite effective at doing that throughout this tournament generally speaking the only thing i would say um and again it's really only look at the alcraz match is how is he going to combat potentially someone matching him physically? And we'll talk about that in a second with Sinner in terms of not just physicality, but also shot tolerance as well. Uh, that's where it then becomes difficult for Medvedev because he doesn't have a huge amount of variation, you could say, in how he plays. Uh, you know, he's the type of person who's then going to start coming forward and serving and volleying. So you, you know what you get with Medvedev, but what he does, he does very well. Okay, in terms of the head-to-head -head then, let's talk about that quickly. So the head-to-head, -head, as I said, was 6-2, or is 6-2 to Daniel Medvedev. Last two matches, though, you can see here, Vienna, our final, Sinner won in three sets, and then the Beijing uh, match as well, Sinner won in straight sets there as well. Uh, but before that, uh, Medvedev was winning on indoor hard, outdoor hard, uh, actually, most of their matches have been on indoor hardcore, by the way, which is interesting. They're no played on clay or grass. Uh, so intriguing to see how the matchup would play out on there. But generally speaking, it's been, yeah, a very one-sided head-to-head until recently. Now, how does this match then play out? And who am I backing to win? So let's break it down in terms of tactics. Yannick Sinner has as I said has been striking the ball extremely cleanly as he normally does anyway. But what he's done really well is be patient in certain rallies that maybe he would pull the trigger too early on. I watched actually the Vienna final again or the highlights of it at least. And I was watching it and thinking what are the big improvements he's made? Why did he win this match against Medvedev when in the past he was always struggling to win? There's a few reasons. Number one, he was always the one, which he would have done in the past, but he was always the one to try and dictate in the rallies when he could. He was trying to make sure that the rallies were on his terms. A lot of the exchanges were in the ad court. Medvedev was trying a lot of the time to target the center backhand, which in all honesty, you know, you'd do with most players. You'd target their backhand side. You'd try and win that ad court exchange because you're more comfortable going into the opponent's backhand, think you're not going to get hurt as much. Sinner is a little bit different. His forehand is incredibly good, by the way. Uh, but the backhand isn't that far behind, and it's also very reliable for the most part. So Sinner was able to change direction, uh, you know, go line pretty, in my opinion anyway, pretty effectively throughout that final. And it, it wasn't hitting winners. He wasn't hitting winners at all. But what he doesn't have that, say, Alcraz has, uh, who played many of today, is you know, a really good slice. And also he doesn't utilize a slice that often either. So what Alcaraz does to disrupt the rhythm of Medvedev and did today was use that backhand slice really effectively against Medvedev. Uh, so he was giving him a little to no pace at times in the rallies, mixing it up, making it difficult for him to settle. And Medvedev then struggled to just absorb pace and redirect, right? He had to generate pace of his own. And that's when it becomes a certain issue for Medvedev, especially on the forehand side. Uh, because not necessarily just because the technique's so awkward, but I just think he doesn't like 
and doesn't really hit with enough spin in comparison to other players to really penetrate through the court as much then. Uh, he, he likes utilizing an opponent's pace on or pace of ball even to, to redirect and use angles. So Sin is not going to give him, uh, for example, a slower ball, but what he will do is use direction, uh, depth, you know, angles. Uh, and he did that very well against Medvedev. He also tried to come forward to the net more, more than I would have said against most other opponents he would. Well, I think he definitely came forward less or does come forward less against other opponents compared to Medvedev. And he clearly would have seen, I think, Kyrgios and, and say Alcaraz and even, Med and even Djokovic, sorry, uh, come forward, serve volley, and there were some interesting similarities between that match today with Alcaraz and Medvedev and Sinner Medvedev, where Alcaraz and Sinner both at times tried to serve out wide on the juice uh, court and tried to serve a volley behind that, whether it's a slice serve out wide or a kick serve out wide, whatever it was, and they got passed and passed pretty comprehensively uh, cross-court by sniper-like forehands by Medvedev, very low over the net, great angle found. And you could see when you watch the, the, high, the, the replay of that point, Medvedev moving really early. So I think with Sinner uh, and also Alcaraz today as well, he realized, and Sinner will realize as well, and he did in that final, that I need to be less predictable uh, when serving. And especially when I want to serve on volley, I need to have disguise or I need to be mixing it up a little bit. Uh, he served extremely well uh, this week, and there's no need for him to really just back himself to necessarily win the point, you know, two, three, four, five plus shots into it. He will and should hit aces. He should hit some on returnables, despite how good Medvedev is on return. And what he does really well, Sinner, actually, which Alcaraz doesn't do, is come forward and hit a lot of swing volleys, and he executes them extremely well. Alcaraz does hit some swing volleys, but I, I don't think he's as good at hitting them as Sinner. I think he prefers to volley or hit drop volleys. Sinner is very good at hitting swing volleys. Uh, very good from what I've seen. Doesn't miss very often. Hits them extremely cleanly and uh, with good depth and direction as well. So that's something for him to definitely, yeah, definitely do. I think taking the ball early, taking out the air against Medvedev is a really good option to make sure that Medvedev doesn't has, have as much time to defend. We're trying to rush him from the baseline. It's definitely a good tactic. If you're going to do it, you need to be effective, especially with the approach shot, because Medvedev is so good at passing players at the net. And Sinner will know that after the last two matches that they played. Uh, and not just the last two matches they played uh, you know, a while ago, but they are very recent. So he'll still have that feeling of knowing what to do. In terms of how Medvedev might adjust, it's interesting because I'm not sure there's many huge adjustments he can make. As I said, he's not going to come forward, for example. He's not going to he's not going to hit the backhand slice a lot as well, so he doesn't really have that in his arsenal. He does do it occasionally, but it's very floaty backhand slice, not super effective. He's not going to start hitting huge high tops and forehand angles. Um, not neither on the backhand. He's going to do that as well. He's not going to start playing uber aggressive. Um, but maybe what Medvedev can do against Sinner, which I think he did do and has done in his first three matches in this tournament, is, yeah, try and dictate with that forehand when he can. And I think what he has done in a few instances is really flatten out that forehand, especially when the ball is rising. He likes taking the ball on, uh, you know, above waist height and really hitting through that ball very flat. It's very difficult on these indoor hard courts. It skips on, it speeds up, it skids on. It's not easy to defend. And I think also what he should do, because Sinner, and to, to be fair, both these players are very good at doing it, but especially Sinner, or sorry, especially Medvedev, is making sure that they're able to defend on the run. And I mentioned it before, Medvedev is able to defend on the stretch or on the slide or on the run, and same with Sinner. He's able to do that as well. And they do it so effectively, it's actually mind-boggling, honestly mind-boggling to see, in my opinion, the amount of depth that they're able to get defensively like, in these moments is just 
Yeah, I mean, it's so impressive, honestly. And the only other player that you can say can really do that uh, or other players is is the other two players in the semifinals. And that's definitely Djokovic, Alcaraz at times. But I actually think these two do it better than Alcaraz, uh, in honesty, in terms of depth uh, and just effectiveness to get them back to neutral. If I was Medvedev, what I would do is try and go behind Sinner at times because Sinner might try and go behind Medvedev, but he's so... His reach is incredible, by the way, Medvedev's, and he's so good at stretching that it may not be quite as effective against Medvedev. But against Sinner, I think it is, because Sinner is very good at moving laterally. So if you take that out then and start going behind him at times, it then one gets him to second guess, and he doesn't move off as quickly, uh, and he isn't as decisive defending side to side. And also, it just gives you an opportunity to to catch him unawares uh, to make sure that he's not able to hit that sliding backhand um, or that incredibly good defensive pass for example so yeah I mean if I was Medvedev I would look to do that as well especially uh, you know for example if he hits that slice of our on the juice side if Sinner then hits the return maybe just pause a little bit on that next forehand that he's going to hit um, or, or backhand and try and go into that forehand side again behind Sinner if you can see him moving and try and be a little bit clever in that way. The only issue that Mobido is going to have is that he doesn't really like coming forward in the net. I know he's improved, but he's still not really up there uh, as someone who's super reliable at the net. Uh, so he can't really finish off the point of the net as often as another player. Uh, so that's where the issue might arise of, okay, then how, but how does he finish off this point then um, if Sinner does get a racket on it? Uh, whereas for Sinner, he's happy to come forward. And as I said, with those drive volleys or swing volleys, he's very effective at utilizing them. So intriguing. Let's then quickly finish up on in terms of like serve return, forehand to forehand, backhand to backhand, because I've been talking about this a lot in terms of uh, analyzing this matchup. Forehand to forehand is an interesting one because Sinner should dominate the forehand to forehand. And that's what Rublev did last year against Medvedev. And that's why he ended up winning that match in a head to head, of course, where Medvedev dominates that as well. And Rublev beat him indoors at the ATP Tour finals. Sinner dominated that exchange in Vienna, got the forehand to forehand exchange. And he needs to do the same in this one. And he should because his forehand has been firing extremely well. He just needs to make sure he's patient with it. Make sure he's changing directions in the right moments. Medvedev's forehand eventually will give him opportunities. It's not as reliable with depth, especially as his backhand. So he will get opportunities. He needs to be patient and he needs to make sure uh, that he... Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me on that forehand side for Sinner really is don't overhit. He has natural timing on that forehand. Don't overhit. And give yourself a little bit of margin, even against someone like Medvedev. And then find the right opportunities to then come forward and finish off the point. Don't force it. For Medvedev, the backhand to backhand, he'll be looking at that. And he tried to really drag Sinner into those ad court exchanges in Vienna. He didn't have as much success as he would have liked. And I'm intrigued to see whether he has more this time round because Sinner's back, as I said, is pretty reliable. It held up well against Medvedev's and he was changing direction a lot. He was happy to defend on the forehand side or backhand side. And yes, Medvedev is still the favorite when the points get extremely long and extremely physical. But the problem is on these very fast indoor hard courts, the points, even with two players as good at defending as these two are, the points are still not going to be extremely long. Uh, for the majority of the points anyway. There's going to be a lot of shorter points, and that's where I think Sinner will shine. And I see Sinner winning a third straight match against Medvedev, given form and given the last couple of matches they played. I find it very hard for Medvedev to make big adjustments to beat Sinner, but then I said the same against uh, Alcaraz when Medvedev played him at the US Open, and then he managed to win very convincingly. So... A lot's going to come down to that serve return dynamic and how well both serve as well. If Sinner serves as well as he's been doing, it's going to be tough. Medvedev needs to have a good serving day as well. When he does, it's very tough uh, for him to get broken. And both players have been returning really well. So let's see. Let's see how we get on. But I just think with the crowd behind him and with the confidence of beating Djokovic and Sinner, 
uh, sorry, Djokovic and Runa as well, back to back, two players they've never beaten before. I think this is going to be a match where he comes into it thinking, look, I'm the man right now, at the moment. I have confidence I can beat him. And I think he's going to win. I think he's going to win in three sets. That's my prediction. Uh, sorry to have gone on longer than expected as well. But if you're still here listening to this video at the end, thank you so much for tuning in. Really do appreciate it. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. And do leave a rating or review if you're listening on a podcast platform. Shout out to our members. We will be doing a live watch along for this. So make sure you tune into that as well. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you very much.